welcome everyone to this NPTEL online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, we started studying the treatment of wastewater using various methods in last few lectures and in the last few lectures we studied regarding the flow equalization, aeration, then sedimentation. Now, we are going to start the actual treatment process which happens in most of the uh, treatment units which are installed in industry or in the municipal corporation or common effluent treatment plant and that process is called activated sludge process. So, uh, this process is ac always used after the primary treatment where usually the physico chemical treatment is done and after the primary treatment we try to remove the organic content mostly in the secondary treatment. So, the activated sludge process is the most common process which is used for removal of most of the organics present in the wastewater after removal of the uh, suspended solid and dissolved solid some of those in the primary treatment. So, activated sludge systems are used in most commonly in the treatment units, wastewater treatment unit as well as the water treatment unit. The activated sludge system uses the active microorganisms which are kept in the suspension form in the reactor to decompose and stabilize the soluble and particulate organic matter present in the wastewater. So, that means we have some active microorganisms which are suspended inside the reactor. So, this is one of the basis of the system. The suspended active biomass is called activated sludge and is measured in terms of mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. So, MLVSS we can always measure the amount of suspended active biomass in any activated sludge reactor using the MLVSS. So, we have already studied regarding this The two distinct features of the process in the activated sludge system are that during the treatment we have certainly the stabilization of the organic matter that means we remove the organic matter, convert it into CO2 and H2O and also there is synthesis of new cells also during the treatment process. So, uh, this is the usually the aeration basin. So, we have some wastewater which will be coming from primary treatment. So, it will be going to this aeration basin which is actually containing the biomass also. So, all these biomasses are present and then these biomass they oxidize all the organic matter present in the water. After that because it is aerated, it may be aerated, it may be highly mixed. So, the biomass along with the remaining organic matter go into the secondary clarifier where via the gravitational settling we remove the sludge as well as the biomass. So, they will go here and the treated water will go out. Now, out of this sludge which contains the biomass as well as the organic matter remaining if it is there. So, most of them will be oxidized, but still some amount of organic matter may be present or the waste this microorganisms may be there. So, this sludge is some of this sludge is recycled back. So, as to maintain the required amount of MLVSS inside the reactor and most of the sludge is wasted and further taken for. Uh, sludge treatment that we will be studying later on. So, this is the working of activated sludge process. Now, for a continuous operation the biomass solids generated in the aeration tanks are separated and thickened in the secondary clarifier that we have seen by a gravity settling. A portion of the settled solids which is called as secondary or activated sludge is recycled and returned to the aeration tank and the excess sludge is withdrawn from the clarifier under flow for additional handling or disposal later on. So, this will be studied in detail later on. The clarified liquid which is the treated or the final effluent is further disposed of into the stream or may be further be taken for further treatment depending upon the requirement and the treatment that has happened. So, this is possible. So, this is how activated sludge process works. The main component of the treatment systems thus are a reactor which is actually a ration tank in which the microorganisms are kept in the suspension 
by mixing or aerating the wastewater. So, we may have some mixing process or aeration process going on inside the wastewater. A settling tank which is a secondary clarifier in which suspended solids which are biological flux from the reactor are separated via gravitational settling. Then a recycling system to return the portion of settled sludge which is the actuated sludge from the clarifier bottom to the reactor so as to maintain the required amount of activated sludge inside the reactor itself. These are the three major component of activated sludge process. Now, the removal mechanism how the organic matter gets removed inside the activated sludge process. The removal of colloidal solids in solids in the suspension is done via physico chemical adsorption on the active biomass and by enmeshment in the biological flux. So, first phenomena is the adsorption. So, physico chemical adsorption of the colloidal solids may occur on the active biomass. So, this is possible. Therefore, proper mixing of waste water with biomass inside the reactor is very essential. So, this is this has to be looked into. Second thing is that the soluble organic solids are removed by a bioabsorption biosorption of the matter by microorganisms and then their biodegradation or decomposition or stabilization. So, first the bioabsorption will occur and second the biodegradation will occur. During the biodegradation by uh, oxidation of the organic solids, a small fraction of the soluble organic matter is synthesized into new cells because the biomass use these organic matter as nutrient for their growth. So, thus new cells are formed and major fraction of the solids are stabilized. So, these are the two basic methods which occur. Then a part of the synthesized cells undergo self oxidation also. So, this is also possible also known as auto oxidation or endogenous respiration inside the reactor during the endogenous growth phase of the microorganism. Oxygen is required to support both the synthesis as well as auto oxidation or oxidation process. Normally, the oxygen which is required is supplied through air by aerating the wastewater by surface aerators. So, we have to supply the oxygen and that may be done via air supply and that air may be supplied via surface aerators or diffused aeration systems. So, both any of them may be installed depending upon the requirement. The aeration system is so designed such that it also supports proper mixing. So, aeration during the release of air, the turbulent mixing happens inside the reactor so that the mixing is also proper and so that we can generate the desired amount of microbial flock inside the reactor during the aeration process. So, aeration along with proper mixing are the two essential requirements inside the reactor part. So, this is there. The major sub processes which are involved in the removal of colloidal or soluble organic matter include the dissolution of oxygen into liquid or wastewater by aeration, then the turbulent mixing of the reactor wastewater and biomass which is returned back. So, the recycled biomass has to be mixed together with the reactor wastewater. So, that is why turbulent mixing is required. Then adsorption of organic matter which is the substrate which is coming from the primary uh, treated wastewater by activated sludge. Then molecular diffusion of dissolved oxygen and soluble substrate nutrient into active biomass. Further basic metabolism of microorganism like synth cell synthesis. So, all these sub processes occur inside the activated reactor itself. Along with that bioflocculation resulting from the production of cellular polymeric substances during the auto oxidation phase. This also happens. Also auto oxidation of cells that is the endogenous respiration is another sub process. Release of carbon dioxide from the active cell mass. So, this carbon dioxide will get released and further go into the atmosphere. Lysis or decomposition of dead cells. So, all these sub processes are also involved inside the activated sludge reactor. Now, there are different configuration and modifications possible in the activated sludge systems. So, the two major types of activated sludge processes which are used are conventional activated sludge process, then 
there is another which is called as complete mixed activated sludge process. So, we will be studying little bit of that. Then other modifications which are used in the treatment of waste waters include like contact stabilization, step aeration, then pure oxygen system in place of ARB supply pure oxygen system, then cross process deep soft aeration etcetera are the some of the modifications which are there. So, we will not concentrate on that, we will concentrate on the basic process only. So, the conventional activated sludge process is like that. So, we have raw waste water which is coming after, after the primary settling tank and it is going into the aeration tank. So, here the waste water is going like this and then in the final clarifier or secondary clarifier the sludge is being taken off at the bottom of the clarifier and some amount of sludge is being re returned back and majority of the sludge is being wasted. So, this is the conventional activated sludge process where inside the aeration tank the water is moving like this. Then there is another type of system where this tank is completely mixed, but first this conventional activated sludge process. The effluent after primary treatment is fed to the aeration tank and is mixed with the return sludge at the inlet end of the tank. So, we have the mixing which occurs in this portion. Now, the oxygen demand by microorganism therefore, is more in the initial length of the tank. So, in the initial cells or initial length, the oxygen demand will be more. This oxygen demand also increases the shock load near the inlet end. Thus, the synthesized biomass is also more near the inlet end, but decreases with the length of the tank towards the outlet. So, we have biomass is also less the concentration of the remaining organic matter is also less at the end of the reactor. The microbial population and process system therefore, hardly approach the relatively constant equilibrium conditions similar to that in the complete mixed tank. So, this is, this is the traditional or conventional activated sludge process. Now, in the completely mixed sludge system which we have influent which is mixed with the return sludge and these are going into the reactor which are completely mixed. So, each of the reactor there is continuous mixing and from this it is going into the settling tank where the sludge is taken off, most of the sludge is wasted and some of them is recycled and we get the treated effluent here. So, in this process is so designed as the effluent from primary treatment is mixed throughout the entire tank instantaneously. So, we have instantaneous mixing of the primary treated wastewater with the return sludge. Because of the complete mixing, the organic loading is considered uniform throughout the aeration tank and the concentration of the reactor biomass is not affected by the shock loadings. So, this is there. Therefore, oxygen demand and microbial growth are also assumed constant throughout the reactor. So, this is the now, there are major design considerations in the activated sludge process. The design of the activated sludge process requires the consideration of following significant aspects. That one of them is the what is the quality or characteristic of wastewater which has to be treated after the primary treatment or we are going directly for the activated sludge process. What is the desired quality which is actually required as per the industry requirements or as per the standard requirement. So, what is the desired quality or characteristic of effluent which is desired? The type of reactor that will be used whether it will be conventional or completely mixed, then we have volumetric or organic loading to be applied to the reactor. So, we always decide beforehand that what should be the organic loading under which the reactor will be designed the amount of oxygen required and the aeration system that will be provided whether it is diffuse aeration or surface aeration. So, that is also decided and which of them will supply the essential oxygen and how it will support the mixing. The quantity of sludge to be generated. So, uh, we also try to see that how much amount of sludge will be generated and wasted for further management because 
we have to manage the sludge which is generated all inside the waste water treatment system. So, it may be primary sludge, the secondary sludge which is generated here. So, everything has to be managed, it will come in the biological treatment systems itself. So, this management is very essential. What are the nutrients requirements for microorganism and environment under which the plant will be operated? So, this is also major design consideration. Now, the usual design computation requires the determination. So, what are the design steps? So, when we are telling that okay, we have to design and activate a sludge process. So, what are the some of the essential things that have to be calculated? One is that what is the volume and dimension of the reactor or reaction tank? amount of oxygen which is required and the power which is needed for the aeration and complete mixing. So, this is there. The quantity of sludge that will be produced and for particular waste and treatment conditions. So, this quantity of sludge that will be produced that also has to be calculated. Volume and dimension of the secondary settling tank clarifier including hopper bottom of the sludge collection. So, this also has to be done. So, this we have studied in the sedimentation section. So, we will be a little bit studying regarding this activated sludge process. Some of the design criteria which is used commonly are given here. The number of aeration tanks minimum 2 for small plants usually 4 or more for larger plants. So, we if we are using then the depth of waste water in the tank what is the side water depth. So, that is so, it may be 4.5 to 7.5 meter for diffused aeration, but if you are going for surface aeration, it is uh, around 1 to 6 meter maximum. Usually, 3 to 4.5 meter depth is the system is designed in this range. Now, the free board region is for diffuse aeration, it is around 0.3 to 0.6 meter, and for surface aeration, it is 1 to 1.5 meter. For a rectangular aeration tank, so the length to breadth ratio generally is taken for each channel of large plant 5 is to 1 and breadth to depth ratio is from 3 to 1 to 4 to 1 depending upon the aeration system. The air requirements now which are there, they vary from 20 to 55 meter cube of air per kg of BOD removed for diffused aeration when the food to microorganism ratio is greater than 0.3, but when the food to microorganism ratio is less than 0.3, the air requirements increase and they may be in the range of 70 to 115 meter cube of air per kg of BOD removed. The power which is required for complete mixing in the range of 10 to 14 kilowatt uh, per thousand meter cube of tank volume for surface aeration system. So, these are some of the design data which are commonly used. Now, we will try to solve some problem related to one problem related to activated sludge system. So, but before going for that let us study the how the different things can be modeled in the activated sludge system. So, we have some influent which is coming with the flow rate of Q having a substrate concentration of S0 that means, the organic loading or BOD loading is S0 and it may be containing some microorganism or not, but we are assuming that the, it is containing some microorganism which is X0. Okay. Now, inside the aeration tank the respective concentrations are with respect to substrate are S, the MLVSS or the biomass concentration is X and the volume of the aeration tank which is completely mixed reactor is taken as V. Now, after treatment it is going to the clarifier and the, from the clarifier we have two streams which are coming. One is the wasted sludge which is going out. So, wasted sludge is having flow rate of QW, XR and SR the respective concentration of biomass and substrate. SR and the XR and CR XR are same for the return activated sludge because after from here both the concentration will be same. So, XR, SR and the flow rate here will be mix of QR plus QW. So, this is being divided into two sections. So, we have 
the return sludge is having flow rate of q r. Now, after treatment it is assumed that the effluent is flowing at the rate of q minus q w. So, whatever is the wasted sludge. So, here q minus q w is the flow rate x c and s c s e are the uh, concentration of biomass and substrate respectively. Now, we can apply lot of few material balances etcetera to calculate any of the design parameters. So, let us see. So, all the flow rates and other things are defined here already I have discussed. So, q is the flow rate of the influent, q w is the flow rate of wasted sludge, q r is the flow rate of the return activated sludge, v is the volume of the aeration tank, s 0 is the influence soluble substrate concentration which is B O D per meter cube some amount, S is the effluent solid con substrate concentration, then X 0, X R, X R is the capital return line, then this is for the sludge drain. So, we have different concentrations will. Now, the equations which can be used for design of aeration tank, one is the what is the mean cell residence time or sludge age. So, we have already studied regarding this earlier. So, from this equation we can find out the sludge age. So, sludge age is like how much amount of the sludge is there inside the reactor. So, this is multiply and how much sludge is being wasted. So, from this data we can calculate. So, x into v is the amount of sludge inside the reactor and this is the amount of sludge which is being wasted from the this line. So, that is why it is q w into x r. We can manipulate this equation to convert this into this form uh, using certain conditions. So, uh, this for this we use the x r and this and other parameters we can convert this into this form and we have already studied regarding this. Then the mass balance around clarifier can be done and around this clarifier if we try to do the mass balance. So, uh, this is given here. So, the amount of biomass which is entering the clarifier is x into q plus q r. So, this is if you see here what will be the amount here? Here x is the amount, but the flow rate will be sum of q plus q r. So, the flow rate is q plus q r. So, this is the flow rate and the so, for this balance is being done. Now, this is the amount which is going after the treatment from the clarifier and this is going into the sludge. So, we can solve this equation to get this particular equation assuming for x c is equal to 0 and the recycle ratio is q r by q we can calculate this. So, these equations can be used for design of activated sludge system. So, we will try to solve a problem to further uh, understand how it is done. So, here in this question an actuated sludge plant is to be designed for 10 MLD domestic wastewater flow to operate at 10 days MCRT and 6 hour of HRT. Assuming BOD 5 at 20 degree centigrade is 175 milligram per liter in the wastewater which is to be treated in the aeration tank. The sludge wasting flow rate is equal to 70 meter cube per day. The return sludge concentration is equal to 8000 milligram per liter. So, this is defined already known. Determine the concentration of MLVSS to be maintained inside the aeration tank to achieve the effluent BOD of 30 milligram per liter. Also determine the recirculation ratio at which the plant should be operated. Assume that the kinetic coefficients k d for endogenous respiration and y the yield coefficient is 0 0.6. So, this is required in this equation. So, uh, this is known from the literature. So, in this question actually in the actual scenario will be only given one thing that that the flow rate of water is this and the water contains a BOD of this and we want to achieve a BOD of 30 milligram per liter. So, this is the actual design condition which is which will be given by any person to us for designing the actuated sludge process. So, the three things will be generally be given 
the flow rate of water, the initial BOD and the final BOD which is desired. After that, we assume certain things so as to design the reactor under those conditions. So, here it is assumed that we are going to have a 6 hour HRT and 10 days MCRT. We are also assuming that the sludge concentration in the return sludge will be maintained around 8000 milligram per liter. It may be something else. We can redesign the system. From the literature, we have to find out the value of KD and Y. This also we can do in the small scale lab also. We can calculate this uh, for this wastewater particular uh, feeding on this particular activated sludge. So, these parameters have to be determined. Now, let us go ahead. So, we have the daily wastewater flow rate is 10 MLD that means 10 into uh, 10 into 10 raised to 3 meter cube per day because it is million liter. So, that is why it is we can also write 10 into 10 raised to 6 liter per day. So, if we are writing liter per day, so it is meter cube per day. Now, the sludge wasting flow is 70 meter cube per day. Return sludge concentration which is XR is given as 8000 milligram per liter. The hydraulic retention time HRT is 6 hour which is equivalent to 0.25 per day. The concentration of influent substrate S0 is 175 and desired is 30. The mean cell residence time has been taken as the 10 days. So, we have mean cell residence MCRT as 10 days. So, these are the parameters which are given. The essential things are these are these are the two parameters which will be given by the any vendor which will be coming to us for designing the system. Now, we have to find out what will be the MLVSS that has to be maintained. Many times uh, we fix the MLVSS first because from the general idea it is known that what amount of MLVSS will be good enough. So, under these conditions under which this data is given, we can little bit change the equation and little a bit after manipulation of this particular equation, we can find out the value of x in terms of all other parameters. So, the equation will be this. Once we feed all the values in units so that all they, they all cut each other, so we will be having this particular values which we have to be feeded and after that we get the value that 2175 is the 2175 milligram per liter 2175 is the ML VSS concentration that has to be maintained inside the reactor for getting the concentration of after treatment to be 30 milligram per liter. Now, compute the recirculation ratio R. Now, for that R can be determined by considering the mass balance of biomass for aeration basin. So, already we did and here it is assumed that the there is no biomass which is going in the effluent. So, x c is equal to 0. So, remember this was the equation, but we assume x c is equal to 0. So, under that the q r value can be determined easily. So, the same equation is being used. So, the balance assuming x c is equal to 0. So, this is going into the sludge, uh, this is going into the, uh, uh, the settling chamber and this is going out of the settling chamber. So, if we calculate this, this will be the recycle ratio which is coming out to be 37 percent. R can also be determined using the relationship around the secondary clarifier which was given earlier. So, assuming x is equal to 0, we can solve this or we can solve this by putting the balance around the aeration basin. So, aeration basin also we can put this balance and we can solve. So, we are getting the same answer virtually in the both the places at 37 percent should be the recycle ratio. So, uh, this is how we can determine. We can determine volume also or other parameters if they are not given depending upon the requirement. So, uh, we can calculate back the volume, we can calculate back the dimension, we can calculate back the aeration, but this is beyond the scope of this here. So, we will uh, will this thus will end the activated sludge process now. Thank you very much.